This is a follow-up video for my reverse voltage protection. Last time we used a P-channel MOSFET and I got a comment that somebody wanted to do it with an N-channel MOSFET because they're uh, cheaper and easier to come by and uh, the actual the RDS uh, on uh, resistance is lower on, on the N-channel MOSFET. So this is the diagram we're going to use to make our uh, reverse voltage protection with an N-channel uh, MOSFET. We take our drain and we tie it to negative and the source is over here tied to the, to the load, okay? Now, uh, how this is going to work, we have our positive up here, comes through our 10K ohm resistor here, through the Zener uh, diode, and then it goes back through this parasitic diode, or the, in, the intrinsic uh, body diode, back to ground over here, okay? So we drop our 5 volts across the, uh, the Zener here, and we get 5 point, you know, 5.1 volts on the gate. That turns on and turns our load on. So now if we reverse the direction here, if we put positive here, negative here, positive is going to come down here. It can't get through this diode. The diode is going to block it and no current is going to go run through this diode. We're, we're going to, the load will stay off, okay? So it's only going to work when the positive is up here and negative down here. So on both of them, we use 10K ohms here. Now, how do we get by with 10K? We, we had talked about, uh, you know, uh, Zener voltage regulation. And when we do that, we usually use this formula here. We'll take the input voltage minus the Zener voltage. So in this case, it's 12 volts and 5.1 volts. That's going to be a 6.9. And then we divide that by our, our ITZ, or our test current from the data sheet. So it had, in this case, it was 49 milliamps, and it comes out to 140 ohms. So if we put 140 ohms in here, we're going to get 49 milliamps through here. It's our test current. It's the, the Zener is going to be happy with that. Now, we can increase the load over here. We can put, you know, 40 milliamps through here. We could probably put up to, say, uh, 48 milliamps, and it's still going to regulate, okay? If we go over 50 milliamps, now, we're not going to have enough uh, current left going through the diode to, to regulate anymore, so we're going to have to decrease this uh, resistance over here. And uh, now, sometimes we'll, you'll take the, the uh, 49 and say this was 50. You would add those together and divide that into your your uh, voltage here and that comes out to say uh, say it's 70 ohms here and then you'll be able to get your uh, you know 50 milliamps across each of these but what happens if you remove the load you're going to get 100 milliamps through the zener and that could uh, cause problems if it's say if it's only like a quarter watt zener or something so uh, you want to be able to keep this as high as possible so that the zener never goes uh, it gets overloaded here even if you you remove your load here Okay, now, why are we using a 10K up here? Or how we can get away with using a 10K? So, in the data sheet, the, the IZ minimum, the minimum current to keep a Zener diode in breakdown for voltage regulation, in this particular one, it's uh, 500 microamps or uh, uh, half a milliamp. Okay, so um, here it is down here. This is the minimum right here. So, this line comes, it's below this line a little bit here. And it needs a little bit of current before it uh, it breaks down here, okay? And it needs to be a, at least a half a milliamp for that to, to be able to break down. And we're using 10K, so at 12 volts, 10K, I'm going to have 1.2 milliamps running through the, the dial here. So that's going to be fine. That's how we can get by with, uh, with our 10K. Now, if we use 10K over here and you put any kind of load over here at all, it would just stop regulating, okay? So... Uh, Yep, so this we can get by with our 10K because our uh, minimum current to keep the Zener in breakdown is uh, is pretty low, you know, half a milliamp or so. So that's how that's how it's going to work, and I, I put it together here. Here we go here. i turn this one on to... Uh, put on amps, and... Uh, this thing gets pretty hot. I put that on there. Can we see all that? All right. So I'm going to turn that on. All right. So what do we have? Uh, if you see that, 2.93 amps on there. And last time we had talked about the uh, what we could run on the diode without uh, without a heat sink. Okay. And uh, just for fun, I'll I'll reverse the direction on this thing see if it was see what happens 
So we got positive and negative. Okay. So that's reversed. Nothing happens. No current. Light doesn't work. I'll put that back the other way. So there we go. So we're running our, uh, well, we got 2.88 ohms on there, or amps on there right now. And let's see what this diode is. And right now it's at 27, uh, 29, uh, 30 degrees centigrade. So still at 30. So no heat sink on there. And uh, we'll let that go for a little longer and see what it does. We got our three amps on there. So uh, with our three amps, we won't need a we won't need a heat sink there. What do we got? Yeah, going up a little bit. 32, 31. So not bad. All right. So that's uh, that's our uh, reverse voltage protection with a n-channel MOSFET, and it seems to work good. We're drawing our three amps across there, and we're still pretty good. So, very good. Thank you.